Today we're continuing the series on spiritual friendship, and I'm very excited that um, we have a couple friends to help me out with the panel. But I just had a few um, words before we started, just to kind of frame everything. Um, there is a kind of call on our lives to engage in spiritual friendships. Uh, I think we're created to learn and grow and operate in an interdependent world. Um, and that's part of the restoration of um, shalom in our world, this kind of interconnected, interconnectedness and peace. Um, I am very aware that there are a lot of barriers to that. I think in our culture, um, especially here, we live in a very hyper-individualistic kind of world. And sometimes there's uh, an air of performance or of, of like masks. There are layers of masks, social media masks and otherwise that we that we put on. So um, when, I, when I consider this topic, when I look around this room, um, I am also just impressed by this feeling of um, change or of like spiritual change making that um, we long for. I think that we, we long to um, engage in as a community. Um, I see us gathering and desiring to engage hard topics together. Um, I see just the ways that we already desire to cross barriers with one another. And um, I see a radical understanding in this room of what it looks like to subvert that currency of like relational transaction that kind of runs dominant in our world. So. I appreciate like what hospitality looks like in this space and what welcome looks like and how we, we strive to do that um, and very intentionally here. Um, so we kind of want to acknowledge even in this room that there are different life experiences and we are coming from different um, spaces. And one of those differences could be life stages or circumstances and um, I think parenting could be one of those differences. <laughs> Many of us are in that season and some of us aren't. And um, anytime there are those different points of like life experience, I feel like there is a, a, a ripe conversation waiting to happen because um, spiritual friendship or something like this might apply very differently to people in different different circumstances or stages of life. And so I am very excited to um, to welcome up our panel, our friends, <laughs> um, from these different corners of the room. Um, <laughs> I want to welcome up Cece and Angela. And yeah, they have just good perspective for us today on what friendship looks like for them in this stage of life and what um, maybe some ways we can cross barriers and just be friends um, amongst different life stages, what that could look like too. So, I have one, I can, well thank you. Cool. Yes. <laughs> All right, um, so I just wanted to revisit the, um, the, the kind of points that we talked about last week about what spiritual friendship might include and we have a list there there are some different points um it includes eating and drinking together and um, many other things and so i just wanted to ask you all um which maybe characteristics are um, particularly resonant for you in the season of life and it doesn't have to come from this list it could be just something that you have really valued in your friendships and yeah maybe Just looking at the list right now, um, I, um, for the loving and challenging each other, um, one spiritual friendship that comes to mind for me is my friend Lydia. Um, we've been going through different stages of life together, actually, just ways that our lives have kind of um, paralleled. Um, and I find that when we come together and we um, experience both um, um, times of um, celebration and times of maybe some hardship um, there I know that it's there's a loving space that's created between us um, 
and when there are opportunities for for learning, um, whether it be like, you know, times for correction, I find that she also challenges me to grow in that way too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one that stands out and is really salient, um, given like what my last year has been like, is the second to last or third to last bullet point where it says offering emotional support um, and demonstrating genuine concern for each other's like feelings and what is going on. Um, I know I felt like very loved by our faith community. Like there's a couple families um, that are here in the audience that have like, when I was so overwhelmed that I couldn't even reach out to ask for help, like I couldn't even be like, I'm so overwhelmed, I need help. Like they like crossed over to me um, and really sought me out in those spaces. And that was like such a gift. It's something I'm still trying to process and like make sense of, like the sense of belovedness that's felt in those friendships. I really like that word belovedness because I do think that's kind of countercultural to what we experience. So. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, how have your friendships changed over time? <laughs> Do you want to go first? Or you want to go? Okay, I'll go first. Um, can I have a bit more context to that, Kate? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it kind of relates to life stage. So when, when you are really little, it's super easy to make friends. <laughs> like kindergarten friendships are like the best because you just <laughs> you just instantly bond over your shoes or whatever it is, even not even something you're wearing, just like who you are. And then as I think you get older, sometimes school brings people together or that kind of a different thing. But like what are yeah, what are your friendships kind of like in this season of life? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think my taken perspective is probably like not typical um, just given like I'm a like, grad student and I'm insanely busy and it's very sad a lot of the time like I don't have <laughs> the time um, and so it really is like I kind of like emerge like once a month or like every couple months I'm like looking at Vanessa she's like, <laughs> like emerge um, and just try to like be intentional about when I can emerge from all the silliness that graduate school is um and be intentional about like so what like what has happened since the last time we talked because last time we talked this is what was going on like how have these things happened so i can also like keep tabs um and be prayerful even though i'm not like present and so i think like the way much my friendships have shifted especially over the last four years being graduate school it's taken a lot of like intentionality and shifting away from like time which is something that i love um, to spend and to give and like accepting that it's okay that I don't have that and just being intentional in those moments in which I do have it. That's good, yeah. I think we're very similar. <laughs> um, so yeah, kind of what Kate was saying growing up, I think my relationships were um, a lot of like out of convenience. You know, you see your um, your classmates every day, you do the same things, you have, you share the same experiences. But I think as, um, you know, since college and after college, um, we're not, my friends and I aren't, you know, seeing each other every day and we're, we're each in our own, you know, stages of life. And I think that's where intentionality really comes through. Um, we make time to uh, meet together to catch up um, and um, be a support for one another. I think one of the things I've been impressed by is how um, we are both in the world and like doing school or doing work or things like that and then also making space for things like community or intentionality I think you said was like important to you and so that's the balance that we walk is like how do we do both you know how do we equip one another to go out and do what we're doing but also um, be, just be like present with each other and how do we when do we surface and how do we make sure we're, we're praying or how does that how do how do we incorporate those things so um yeah that's great um what are some challenges that may you may face i think you touched on on some of that with like time being important to you but not having a lot of it like what are what are some challenges or barriers to deep spiritual friendships that you might experience in this season of life If you need a, a moment, <laughs> I 
I've been thinking about the differences in like the people around me and like where they're at in life. And I think sometimes it's challenging if we're doing different things or if we're working a lot or, if, you know, life stage is different. It's sometimes hard to like cross over that into each other's schedules and stuff. And I, I want more of that. Like I long for that because I think it's, it could be so rich to learn from people in different, even different life stages. But um, yeah, I don't know. What are some barriers in your own um, I think time is definitely the biggest one for me. Like, I have no time. Um, <laughs> like, even, like, I can't, I don't have any space to, like, sacrifice time a lot of time. It's not like I can, like, not do something, you know? Um, so I think that's definitely a big thing. Um, the other parts, I think, are more, like, an interpersonal thing. So along with that, like, in being, like, kind of vulnerable, um, like, the guilt that comes along with that, that makes it harder to engage if, like, I'm so well-loved and I want to also be, like, exude this and get to know people and, and I can't. And so, um, like, figuring out how to navigate my own feelings that can, like, be self-isolating um, is one. And I had another one, but I don't know if I'm going to remember it. Yeah, time, feelings. Um, I also, I don't know if this is like a challenge, but just like something I'm learning is it's also okay to not have deeply rooted friendships with everyone. Like it's okay to like allow them to exist as they are um, and be able to come back to them and like allow them to grow uh, more naturally without, again, that feeling of like guilt of like I should, because shoulds aren't real. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think what comes to mind for me is energy. I'm more introverted. Um, and in my workplace, it's a lot of um, interpersonal relationships, um, a lot of like being on and um, yeah, having really um, um, deep relationships as part of my job. Um, so I think um, that might be a barrier is I want to make sure that I'm still present in my friendships and my family, but sometimes um, I need to kind of like monitor myself and um, create spaces for both like um, pouring into like the people in my life, but also pouring into myself and giving myself rest and recognizing the needs that I have. Rest is good. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. <laughs> I think those are very real. Yeah, I've experienced some of those same things too. I'm like, Oh, how do I connect with people in in life and work, and then also like create space for myself to receive and to share vulnerably and to connect um, authentically? So those are really good. Um, what might it look like to have intergenerational friendships? Um, and then as the kind of addendum to that, like how have you maybe seen churches do that well or have you experienced that well? And then how have um, you seen areas to improve? Like how can we do that better? I love that. Um, in undergrad, I was with, um, I was in a mentorship with a woman who was in her 50s. Um, we were, um, in a international student club where we, um, you know, um, formed relationships with international students and kind of just shared about Jesus and um, the focus was relationally. And but I liked that they, um, the adult leaders, focus on the students as well. Um, and I had learned so much from um, my mentor. She um, did missions um, in Australia for a couple years, and then she went to China. And I, I just, it was very special, and I, I would love that uh, again. Um, but I think there is value in that, um, like being in a different space and then connecting with someone who's also in a different like time and space and like um, sharing and um, knowledge. Because I think it goes for both ways. I think that um, younger people can learn from older people, and older people can learn from younger people. Yeah, I was thinking about that today, and I was like. I think like being willing to learn as a young person and then doing my best to remain flexible as an older person. Um, I'm not that much older, but like, I'm like older than like Shalom, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like what can I learn from Shalom, you know? Um, but there's a lot. Um, 
I think um, part of it's yeah, being open, being flexible. Um, I also have had like a really fun spiritual like friendship with like a 80 year old like Ghanaian man that like I randomly like became friends with and it was so fun. <laughs> um, and so something that did take a bit and something that I think I am in, like more centered on is understanding like not only their age as being a cultural diversity factor, but also like, who are they? Mm -hmm. um, what context do they come from? And then in that way, like, especially if they're older, I mean, older or younger, but if they're older, like what types of things should I be considering regarding like respect and how to navigate that relationship in a way that feels like respectful and life-giving for them as I'm also gleaning from them in relationship with them. Um, yeah. I think there's a lot that we can learn from others, but I also like that you said it was fun. <laughs> like that that's like important too. I yeah. Very, very cool. Um is, is do you have any like last thoughts or like any um I guess encouragements for people who are seeking spiritual friendships? This one is an off the cuff question, so <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. I just thought that'd be fun to to ask you too. Any advice? I already think that, you know, some of the things you shared about your experiences with friendship were, were um, kind of cool takeaways, like being intentional or um, the, the range of friendships, how that also teaches you how to um, be respectful or to like to learn from others and to be open and then also flexibility. But yeah, do you have any like encouragements for us? Oh no, I, I talked too much. <laughs> Do you have any encouragements for us who may be um, seeking spiritual friendships? Yes. Um, I think under, like, um, part of my educational journey has been understanding like the wholeness that we are. Like I, I feel like we're often like sectioned off into like this is my like spiritual self, this is my emotional self, this is my social self, like this is all, these are all my selves. Um, and then it's like coming and actually bringing them together and integrating them. Um, and so thinking about spiritual friendship, like at least for me, it isn't only spiritual. It isn't only this like prayerful walk that I have with a friend. Like that's like one part of our friendship, but the rest of it is like engaging emotionally, like meeting actual like needs, like rejoicing in mourning. Um, and then like from those experiences, seeing how we're understanding Christ understanding like how we may be met by him or how we may be feeling far from him, um, how he's attending to us or how we're feeling unattended by him um, in those experiences. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow, thank you both for your insights and for sharing your perspective. Um, yeah, we give you a Oh, all right. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Very cool. Um, I do want to acknowledge that there is a like a diversity of experience, even within like a non-parenting <laughs> life stage. You know, I feel like that is a huge range. And I was even looking up um, more information on this idea of uh, emerging adolescence. There's this like idea that we start, you know, being an adolescent as a teenager or whatnot. But lately, we've been like kind of extending and growing and and pushing that into our twenties. And so um, that is a definite stage of life. But then beyond that, there's also well, what does it look like to navigate life as an adult who might not be in this kind of like family unit thing that that society de deems as like normative. So. Those are questions um, that we can continue to ask and continue to like learn from from one another. Um, I encourage us to keep having those conversations with each other at church. And um, I will throw this out there. I was reading about David and I was struck by his spiritual friendships. Um, maybe we can put up 1 Samuel 18, just the, the first verse. Um, he, he's described as becoming one in spirit with his friend Jonathan. And I, I want to explore or think about more what that, what that means. He loved him as himself. Like, how do we engage in that kind of friendship with each other 
in a spiritual spaces, like becoming one spirit with someone. You got to know them. You got to like talk to them enough to know what their spirit is, like who they are and how to love them well. Um, and then from that, I was struck by, I, I think it's in 2 Samuel. The 2 Samuel 9, um, well, you could go to verse 1, Michael, right? Is there anyone still left in the house of Saul whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? So this is later. This is after um, Jonathan isn't even in the picture, but David is looking for, like, well, the person he ends up finding is Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth. <laughs> and um, he doesn't have a relationship with this, this person, with Jonathan's son. And I think um, Mephibosheth, um, David invites him into his house to sit at his table and to eat at his table. And I, I have seen that kind of kindness here at One Life. I have seen people just invite them, others into their home and say, you're going to eat with us now. Like, you're at our table. And I think that is is like kind of radical. I think that's that's kind of, um, it should be normal maybe, but it's something that we don't always have the chance to do. And so I, I am encouraged by that. Um, I think that, yeah, that's like a, um, a beautiful picture of, of God's family. So with that, um, thank you again for sharing. I, I hope we can just continue these conversations. And next week, we're going to hear from folks who are in the stage of caring for littles and running after children. And, and how do you still extend spiritual friendship to others in that, in that, um, in that season of life? So, yeah. Maybe I can pray for us, and then, and then we can. Okay. <laughs> Lord God, um, you are the God of friendship. You are a God of relationship. And you've shown us what that looks like by inviting us into relationship, into family with one another. And we ask that you bless this, um, this experiment of friendship that we engage in as we become followers uh, after your heart. And I just ask for a blessing of... Um, that kind of relationship in this community, um, for that kind of growth in this year, and for, um, for that desire to just well up in our hearts. God, would you give us creativity um, and how that looks even in the midst of busy lives? And would you just uh, give us a, a kind of an innovative spirit, Lord, to, to um, pursue friendships across different boundaries or across different barriers? Um, in ways that honor you and that glorify you. Um, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.